Hi there, I'm Jessie Chahel. Thanks for joining me on The Nation. Now, many Malaysians have been complaining about weight gain, especially during these past few months of the MCO, which is not really a surprise considering that Malaysia is a food haven. We have uh, extremely tasty food deliveries that come to our house. And besides, during the lockdown, we were very much homebound and we really had not much to do, especially in those initial weeks as we tried to find what was the new normal. So obviously, less physically active, um, mentally quite strong, Stressful, can also promote emotional eating and uh, while we took to social media many of us tried to perhaps even hide behind the camera not post our latest pictures uh, of late as uh, there has been considerable amount of weight gain amongst Malaysians now the issue of obesity overall though is nothing new to us here in Malaysia for example the World Health Organization has also said that obesity has been a global public health since 1970 and we know that overall Malaysian eating habits, we still need to do some improvement there. Having said that, there are many of us who are very health conscious and we've got on that wagon of dieting and nowadays what's even fashionable, intermittent fasting. Well, here to tell us the do's and the don'ts for weight loss as we are still in the RMCO for the next few months is Dr. Prabhjot Singh. He's been on the show before but he's back here today looking his fit and fine <laughs> self. Welcome back doctor, how are you? Uh, Alright, uh, yeah thanks for having me back. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. Um, well, so how are you? I'm good, thank <laughs> okay, you. Yeah. I'm glad that uh, you know we are in the RMCO phase, but uh, nonetheless, it has been a few hard uh, initial weeks as well. And you know, what was the first thing that we could all go to to find some kind of comfort? It was family meals. We were homebound. We were trying out recipes. We've seen YouTube stars emerge as well yes, yes. Uh, from that. So. A lot of it centered around food and consuming food, yeah. um, but what is sort of the danger of of that really? Well, I think I mean what happened during MCO is uh, I really think it was boredom. Okay, everyone's at home. What do I do? I can't go out. I can't do anything. Oh well, there's a snack. I'll eat a snack. Unfortunately, the snack is not good. And then people with kids at home, kids are running around at home. They're not actually running around doing anything really physical. Mm -hmm. They want snacks. They're eating. Sometimes also to keep them quiet, give them food. Now, we're, sedentary lifestyle is a big problem. Malaysia is probably the, f I think the nation with most obesity in, in the whole of Southeast Asia. So we are the fattest. Right. Um, but then now we're coming out of it. What, what, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, uh, okay, everyone's pound on the weights and things. Do you run to the gym and things like that? Now, it's important to remember that before you get onto any program, any way of losing weight, make sure that it's right for you. I mean, you may have health concerns that a program of sort will not suit you. So always, always see your doctor before you start anything. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. That's right. So it's a, not a one-size-fits-all. It's Definitely not an off-the-shelf uh, shelf solution. We have this picture here on uh, the screen right now on some of the numbers on global obesity. Now, your specialization, uh, gastroenterology, uh, was there a focus uh, on diets? Uh, it's, was that part of your professional course? Uh, in medical school, not really, but because you learn about it very quickly, you have to do your own investigation, you have to invest, uh, find out what is it that's going on, nutrition, mm -hmm. diet, weight gain, weight loss, etc. And there are many options out there. Why do we see here that women, uh, both times back then, yes. uh, about 40 years ago and, and now, why are women more uh, sort of affected? Uh, it's difficult to say why women particularly, but I'll give you an example. Over in Europe, what is considered normal weight has now changed. Mm -hmm. They have moved it higher up. In Japan versus in the US, what is considered a normal BMI is by three points different. So what would be considered a, 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 a normal weight in, in the US is obese in Japan. So, so is that. And also, just to keep people happy, you know, even the models on any magazine uh, who are slightly larger than we would have accepted before is deemed acceptable. Now, if you make that acceptable, everyone's going to say, well, I'm acceptable, I want to be a little bit more. And then things trends go out okay, of control. So the scales keep changing. Exactly. And trying to keep everyone happy, these things go up. But then also, also, if you look at both of those charts, everything has gone up, men mm -hmm. and women. We have access to food like no one's business. Last time it was three meals a day, now we're having 10 meals a day. We're eating at 12 o'clock and I get up at night, go and have a mama food. 
two in the morning. We never used to have that. That's right. Uh, it's it, definitely an unprecedented time as well. Many people course. had to get used to it. Um, but during the MCO as well, you were at work. Did you see a raised levels of uh, anxiety and stress and, you know, people trying to make sense of it all? That's true. There are a lot of people with gastric issues and, and stress. They're mostly a fear of what's going to happen for work, the, 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 the virus itself. But then also, a large number of people who actually lost weight because, as you said before, you know, they're cooking at home and trying to be more healthy and done that. Mm -hmm. But then there is oh, this other cohort of people who actually put on weight because they just relied on too easy access to food. Okay, but it all comes down to our gut. This yes. is the epicenter of yes. the body. Yes, yes. Tell us that, that importance. Okay, well, um, if you're talking about uh, your, your stomach, okay, uh, you have to look at what, what makes you feel full. You're going to stop eating when you are full. Uh, volume matters, not necessarily the type of food. For example, uh, there's this thing about uh, calorie deficit and calorie dense food. For example, macronutrients and then your micronutrients as well. All that is important. Your protein, carbohydrates, uh, vegetables, etc. is important. But if you compare uh, vegetables versus oil, uh, vegetables of the same calorie content would be that much and your oils might be that much. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you going to fill your stomach up with that much? You're going to have to have more. With that, your calorie content goes up. So the quality of food and what you eat is very important. Eating vegetables, for example, you know, any greens, um, probably 90% water. So you're going to eat that feel full, calorie low. Right. Well, it's oily stuff, high, and you're going to have more because you're not full. That, that's, that's the first differentiation. Different in fact, but of though. late there's been a lot of talk about high fat, and high good fat also yes. includes some good oils. So, so you're talking particularly about all the keto diets and things like this. Yeah, no. If you ask any doctor, they would uh, say definitely no, mm -hmm. for a simple reason: a ketosis puts your body in an acidotic state. That itself will break down your bones, lead to osteoporosis, and then what happens to all this calcium that's floating about? It's going to get excreted by your kidneys. Kidney stones go up, and there's lots of studies showing that people. On, uh, Keto diets actually die of heart attacks. Right. Much higher. What about yes. the virgin coconut oil trend and the olive oil trend that people have been consuming? And we've heard about a lot online. We'll be back with your answer on that, Doctor, in just a short while. Don't go anywhere. I have to really go <laughs> off the cuff, isn't it? Really? I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Dan bagi meningkatkan keyakinan ibu bapa untuk mengantar semula anak-anak mereka ke TASKA. Ke TASKA, kerajaan akan memberikan geran kepada pengendali TASKA untuk mematuhi dan melaksanakan SOP yang ditetapkan. Dan selain itu, e-voucher akan disediakan untuk perkhidmatan pengasuh kanak-kanak yang ditempah dalam talian dan juga insentif cukai pendapatan individu untuk yuran yang dibayar kepada taman asuhan dan taman didikan kanak-kanak sehingga RM3,000. Langkah ini akan dikawal selia oleh Kementerian Pembangunan Wanita dan Kebajikan Masyarakat dan LHDN. Heather, welcome back. Uh, I'm in conversation with Dr. Prabhjot Singh Sidhu, and of course, uh, he is here to tell us about the do's and don'ts for a weight loss or weight management uh, during uh, the MCO. Just before the break, Doctor, yes. uh, I had posted this question for you to answer, which is this tre yeah. trend of yeah. oils, uh, yeah. you know, healthy oils, so much of advertisement around yeah. it, so many family members and friends and loved ones advocating for it, but you as a specialist say yeah. it's wrong. It's wrong. I mean, people are drinking you know, shots of oils every morning, oh, I'll have this oil, it's good for me, etc. I mean, if you look at the type of oils, I mean, oils in itself are, are, are bad. And and you, you probably want to pick the healthiest ones. The worst ones are all this. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know whether I should say which oils are worse, but but certainly the latest one about coconut oil. That's that's definitely a bad idea. Okay, it's uh, bad to consume it. Yeah. It's like a spoonful or two spoonfuls yeah, I that mean, people are doing. Find a different oil. Use canola But if you use it in your better. cooking, if you used it well, in... Well, then all you've done is you're having less of it, mm -hmm. but you're still having it. Uh, it's certainly better than having a spoonful, but it's still there. Uh, and use a different type of oil. Or don't use oil at all. There's so many ways of cooking now that you do not need to use oil. Because the thing is this, uh, oil is calorie dense. You can, you're definitely going to put on weight. And never mind the fact that it 
uh, messes around with your cholesterol levels. I mean, uh, everybody says coconut oil's got, wow, it's great, it raises your good cholesterol. But the thing is, the latest evidence would say that your good cholesterol really plays no part in having a heart attack. It's your bad cholesterol that's really important. So don't take coconut oil. There, you have options, other options. Uh, canola oil's one good thing, flaxseed oil's another one. Uh, and then, uh, if, that, that's really oil. Avoid it at all costs if you can. But if you can't, then extra virgin olive oil is probably a better option than coconut oil. But this is also virgin coconut oil. Uh, no, coconut oil as a whole is bad. I see. Yeah. All right. Um, so, again, you know, just like this, many people on this health and fitness bandwagon, especially now when it's time to drop those few extra kgs sure. that we've gained over the, the past few months, yeah. um, you say the surefire way, and you say you've done so much of reading yeah. uh, on the best practices or best methods, and you yeah. say the surefire way is calorie deficit. Well, uh, it's not starving. I'll give you an example. If I was to ask you to eat, less in your meals, you will forever feel hungry. But if I ask you to skip a meal for the first few days, you will feel hungry. After that, you don't. So actually, Why is that? What happens? It's your, the body's way of working it out. It switches off. So if you say, all right, I'm not going to eat my whole meal today. I'm going to eat an apple. You will feel hungry. You will feel hungry. You will want more food. The next meal, the same. But if you starve, you don't not starve. You go on a fast. After day two... Intermittent fasting. Well, intermittent fast is so much meaning to it, right? Could it be a 16-hour fast? Could it be a two-day fast? Could it be, you know, all, all that kind of thing? But yes, when you fast, you've got no food in your stomach. That drive of having food is also lost after a couple of days. So that's probably a better way to do it. Now, if you're talking about intermittent fasting particularly, your, the best way to make it work is, is essentially what I tell everybody, eat when there is light. When there's no light, do not eat. And I don't mean switching on the light, I mean the sun. Because yeah. your body works in such a way that in the daytime, it's made to absorb, get the food in. Circadian uh, rhythm. Yes, exactly. The, the, the body clock, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there's one body clock in your head and one for your body. They work on the same thing. But if you throw your body off, meaning you eat at night, it doesn't know what to do. They, this, it's desynchronized. When it's desynchronized, it's not working together. How you process food also changes. Your metabolic health gets affected. How you, you break down sugars all get affected. And it's so easy to fix. Just don't eat when it's nighttime. So if you're going to fast, then as far as we stand right now, of course, things keep changing. The, the nighttime fast is better. What of this concept of autophagy? Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's a new one. There's a lot of debate for them. So I'm neither here nor there with it because the evidence is... Self-eating, basically. Yeah, but it's, the, the evidence is quite limited and it's people's opinions and, oh, this must be because of that. So I wouldn't really buy into it, not yet. Okay, but you also say diet yeah. is more important than exercise. Yes, for a simple reason that if you had two uh, drumsticks, you probably have to run for two hours, I don't know, something a lot. Would you run for two hours if you had uh, two drumsticks? Probably not, and you're going to have more than that. So even though you could burn it off, you're not going to burn it off. So don't introduce it at the start. Now, there's also this other thing where our parents uh, tell us, uh, eat a heavy breakfast, eat king and then prince and pauper, right? That's right. That works absolutely uh, the right way around because there are work and studies being done in the past that say that you fed people the same calorie intake throughout the day. And the people who have the lightest meal in the morning versus and the heaviest at night versus the heaviest in the morning and lightest in the evening, the people that have the heaviest breakfast tend to lose weight. That's because how your body works. It's a circadian clock again. You see how you keep feeding it and that when it's not supposed to. So by eating the same calories, just this thing called chronobiology, uh, by eating the same calories, but the way you time it, you can make a whole world of difference. Okay, but you say that Malaysians have the wrong pattern of eating. Oh, yeah. We, as humans, tend to want... You say, oh, yeah, like you've seen many cases. Oh, yeah. I'll put it this way. I always say, well, you cannot get good food after 9 o'clock unless you really try. Can you? I mean, unless you cook your own. Yeah, unless you cook your own. But but then if you're busy, you're not going to. Yeah. And and so humans as a whole also have a tendency to eat more fatty food at the end of the day, which then goes against this whole intermittent fasting and nighttime eating mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We have access to too much food, too easily, and at really well, it's cheap, but really bad quality. All of it. I mean. Think about it. If you got your mi goreng for three ringgit, do you think they're using virgin uh, olive oil? Of course not. They, they're probably just using the oil that was there from yesterday. Right. But where food um, is concerned, sometimes can be challenging, as you've pointed out. Yeah. Busy schedules. Yes. Um, also with the lockdown, it's a bit difficult to get hands on yeah. fresh food here and there. Um, but the other point was that lack of exercise also affected bone mass and and the body itself. Yeah. 
So, I mean, uh, if you look at astronauts, they all suffer from osteoporosis because they are not uh, doing weight-bearing exercise. They're not walking. So if you're just sitting there doing nothing, your bone mass will definitely go down. Uh, the important thing about, about exercise and mass and things like this, uh, if you want to burn... Now, the principle is not about weight. It should always be about fat. A bodybuilder would probably be considered obese. But have you seen a bodybuilder have not an ounce of fat on them? Not really, not an ounce, but they, they, they are not obese, but on the thing is that. Yeah. So it's never, it should never be about weight loss. It should always be about fat loss. And, and there are lots of machines to, to calculate all these things. And, and how you approach it is very different. You see, when people go and send a scales, they don't eat rice for a day. You've lost one kilogram because our rice holds lots of water. Mm -hmm. But two days later, the weight's back, and then now you're all depressed, and you start eating, and now you put on more weight. The reverse should be true. You go to the gym, you work out, you exercise, you build muscle. The more muscle you build, the more fat it burns. Though your weight stays the same, your clothes feel loose. And that's what you're doing. That is the right way to do it. Not starving yourself and things. Remember, any diet plan, any exercise and things is not a fad. It's not for two months. It's a lifestyle. Otherwise, you should be back at square exactly. one. So why even bother? Mm -hmm. You know, Why torture yourself? Mm -hmm. Right. On that note, another quick break coming up as we stomach all of <laughs> these pointers. We'll be right back in just a few moments. With the MERS 999 application system, getting emergency assistance is now easier. Save Me 999 Police connects the Malaysian public to the police. Save Me 999 Deaf for those with hearing or speech impairments. And Save Me 999 Blind for those with visual impairments. Download now for free on your smartphones. MERS 999 and applications make emergency calls easier. to the nation in conversation with Dr. Prabhjot Singh Sidhu. We've been talking about weight loss during the MCO or what's left of the uh, RMCO phase uh, until August. So a few more months to go. Things are a lot more loose now. That's right. Uh, it seems like we are in the real proper recovery phase. But uh, will we still want to address the issue about weight loss and healthy lifestyle? Children and kids, they've been so affected uh, by uh, these, uh, this, this, this entire you know, crisis as well. Uh, even though they're schooling from home and they are still active, but eating habits have been affected. Uh, yeah. Parents are doing what's convenient. Uh, kids are asking for their favorite foods. And most okay. of the time, those are not healthy. So according to reports, there's been a three-fold increase in obesity amongst kids here in Malaysia. Um, I'm not surprised with that and I don't think we got the MCO to blame uh, for it but if you look at the MCO anyway, kids would normally run around, they would run wild and they're not doing it at home, they cannot, there's not enough space for them to do that. But if you look at, at, at eating habits, now uh, I have to say I'm not a pediatrician but if you just look at what uh, adults do, we come back, we snack, we do all these things that are wrong, we know it's wrong, what are the kids going to do? They will not listen, they will copy. They will do what we are doing. Ways around this are, are such. Firstly, don't have the junk food there. It's not a quick fix. The more you give them, the more they want, etc. But meal prep, for example, uh, if it's time to cook a meal, do it as a family. Everyone gets involved. So it's not one person's job. It's not a chore. When you go shopping, take the kids uh, shopping. All right, RMCO to MCO, you can't do that. But otherwise, you can. Because like I said, it's a lifestyle change. It's not just for now. Mm -hmm. Take them shopping, show them why one is better over the other, and then get these good habits in. So they will do, they feel more involved, and they will learn more about food. Remember, I said even medical school, they don't teach us a lot about food. You have to learn yourself. And, and, and kids love doing that. And then when you come home, prepare the meal straight away. So when it comes to a time when you come home, when your kids come back from school, oh, they're tired, oh, I don't want to go and do this. Uh, instead of opening a pack of crisps or something, oh, look, I've made this thing from yesterday. I, I like this, that's why I made it. I'm going to eat it now. Kids will do exactly the same thing. On top of that, if you buy, for example, apples, don't stack them at the back. 
open them right in front. When you open the cupboard, again, when you come back from school, you're tired, you're going to eat what's right in front of you. It's, it's a default. You're not going to go at the back there and pick the unhealthy stuff. I was just going to ask you, how do we you know, try to get them excited about fruits and vegetables? They need to learn. They need mm -hmm. to learn that it's not bad and what it's actually doing to them. I mean, you make it, make it fun for them. I mean, if, it, if, it's, if it's really young kids, then you know, I mean, vegetable, uh, fruits have sweet, sweet elements to it. Is that if it's teenage girls who worry about their weight, you tell them about how vegetables can, can keep them slim and things like this and, and approach that way. What would you say are some of your tips and tricks uh, yeah. for a healthy gut? Because again, that is the main system yeah. control center uh, for vegetables. your body to vegetables. operate. Vegetables, definitely vegetables. Don't, don't, as far as I'm concerned, don't waste money on probiotics unless a doctor has told you you need it for a very specific reason. Uh, your gut bacteria thrives on fiber uh, and, and, it, and, and it gives you the variety of it. This also fits with your circadian clock, your, your body's clock, eating at the right time. The variety of uh, uh, small bowel bacteria that is there uh, does promote health. A lot of people have also, uh, you know, decided that supplements would be enough, especially without a healthy diet or good healthy lifestyle. Um, that you know, that they once they take supplements, they're in the safe zone. But can that work if your gut in the first place is not in a uh, sort of an alkaline or neutral? Well, uh, the supplement you take supplements if you need it. A doctor said you are deficient in calcium, hence you take this, you get better. But don't take supplements otherwise. Your diet should be able to give you everything you need. Why waste money on supplements when a, a whole food diet is enough and you will probably get more because it's, a supplement will take the essence of it. But what, it's just like I'm telling you, all right, I'll give you apple juice, a squeezed apple, or I'll give you an apple. You're going to get fiber and all sorts of things with it. Talking it about that. apple, the last yeah. time we were on the show, we yes. did talk about apple cider vinegar. That's yeah. another craze. I don't yeah. know if it's a trend. I don't know if it works. Some people say it has. Some people yeah. say no. But as a specialist, so, what is your view? Uh, Stomach-wise, gastric-wise, no bad. It'll irritate your stomach. That's I mean, it's acetic acid. But then there are studies also saying it, it stops your, your sugar spike. So in that way, it's good. But again... The quality of apple cider vinegar you buy, because vinegar comes from alcohol. If it hasn't been converted properly, you're just having having alcohol. That's not the right thing either. Don't go and start buying apple cider vinegar just because somebody told you. It may be right for them. It may be absolutely the wrong thing to you. Talk to your doctor. It may be suitable for you. But if you get aluminum or gastritis, then yeah, it's going to get worse. Uh, it's not a magic cure. It is helpful, uh, just like so many things are helpful. If you use the right way, green tea. I was just coming to that. What about green tea, green tea yeah, black okay. coffee? So coffee, uh, yes, definitely good for you. But if you have five cups of sugar, what's the point, right? Green tea, uh, there was a report about a year ago of a guy drinking uh, lots of green tea for health, liver health, but then decided to up it to be more healthy and had started taking capsules. Unfortunately, it killed his liver. He needed a liver transplant. Mm -hmm. This is the same green tea, dosage different. So... Don't do anything without checking. Everything must have some evidence before you get on it. I mean, a herbal supplement may be great for you. It may not, but you do not know. Only when the studies are done, then you know it's at, at minimum, do something that's safe. And then on top of that, you get some benefit, great. But if it's, you don't know if it's safe or not, please do not. What would be your most safest recommendation for our viewers today uh, as we go through these next few months of MCO especially? With regards to weight loss? Working from home, yeah, eating okay. at home. Well, I tell, I tell you what, if you're worried about weight loss, I, I, I would challenge you for the next one week to eat an apple before you have your dinner. And I guarantee you, you will not finish your dinner. Not, not because you, 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 you're full, you just will not want to eat it. And I'm just telling you what an apple can do for you, what vegetables can do for you. Just eat that one apple before dinner. You won't. You won't finish your dinner. Fruits, vegetables yes. versus meat. Yes. Um, that also, research has shown that the body is able to break down fruits and vegetables much easier, much faster yes. than it does uh, meat. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, our gastrointestinal tract is more similar to one of a cow than it is to a lion. It is much longer for good reason. Uh, it's not so much... I mean, the vegetables are good for your small bowel bacteria, the absorption, the, the, the nutrients, etc. It's fantastic. But it, the problem with meat is that it's not fully broken down and you, you go through a digestive process where chemicals are formed and released into the colon, which then causes harm, increases the risk of, of colonic cancer. I mean, this is for all meats. Uh, never mind the fact that, that fish has got mercury and all sorts of things. Right? Red this meat, is, white Doesn't matter, meat. even if it's chicken. Uh, chicken, everybody looks at it as chicken. Wow, chicken is protein. 
Well, yes, it's protein. Uh, quality of protein is debatable. And then, but there's a lot of fat in there as well that you never really account for because you look at it, oh, it's chicken, it's not fat. I'm not taking any fat. Name. Uh, I'm sorry, but you are. Uh, so vegetables is good. It's definitely good. How it works in your whole gastrointestinal tract, I could talk for an hour about this, mm-hmm. but uh, I won't. But uh, the meat is not, not in your favour. Definitely not in any form. There you go. Time to rethink what we're consuming. Thank you very much, Doctor, for coming in. Of course, putting into perspective do's and don'ts uh, during the MCO period uh, and as we try to lose weight as well. I think most importantly is keeping to a healthy lifestyle. Indeed, very much so. That's right, with the right amount of diet and exercise. That's all the time we have on The Nation today. Thanks for watching. Good luck, Dr. Benama, and more coming your way. See you next time.